So by now you probably understand, or at least have heard of the benefits of developing with JavaScript frameworks like Angular or React. The next question that usually comes is, well, what's the best one to use? What should I use for my organization, or which is the best one in general? And unfortunately, it's not an easy answer, because a lot of these frameworks share similar concepts that make building scalable web applications possible. Imagine we go to a car dealership and we ask a salesman, what's your best car? Well, it's going to depend, right? We might need something with great gas mileage or great towing capacity. All the cars in the lot will technically take us from A to B, but they'll do it in different ways and we might like one versus the other based on those features. So it's very similar with JavaScript frameworks. A lot of them are based around componentized development, making scalable large applications easier, but they're going to do it in different ways. And so some developers really like Angular, some really like React. But again, both are great solutions to make large web or mobile applications. Ultimately, we encourage your team to test drive some of these tools and figure out the best solution for yourself. With that said, let's get into some differences between Angular and React. Angular, as advertised, is a complete framework for either web or mobile. It rolls off the assembly line with everything we need to build large-scale applications out of the box. It's built on TypeScript, a superset of JavaScript, which can be great or terrible depending on who you ask. TypeScript is a language that actually compiles down into standard JavaScript. It essentially gives us features of the future to use today, as well as optimizing our code for the browser. Because remember, once new JavaScript standards are defined, browsers still have to play catch up and implement those features or make them available to use. TypeScript lets us use these features and then worries about spitting out code that the browser will understand. It's a strongly typed language that allows developers to specify data types and strict contracts between various pieces of code. Those who come from a Java or C-sharp background might really like TypeScript as it shares a lot of common features. Now there's a ton of great things in TypeScript that we can't possibly cover in one video. So we'll be diving deeper into these as we continue to release more tutorials. But one of the greatest benefits about TypeScript and having that compilation process is that we can catch a lot of errors in our code before even running our app. If you've ever worked with JavaScript, you can understand the pain in easily misspelling a word that crashes your entire program. You can waste several precious minutes hunting for a bug that was all because of a silly mistake. Now to be clear, TypeScript can be used with a lot of different tools, even things like React, but the cool thing about Angular is they really treat it like a first-class citizen, and you'll notice all the documentation is defaulted around TypeScript. If you're using React and you want to use TypeScript, you might find it hard to find documentation or others doing the same thing. Now to build your mobile applications in Angular, there's a couple ways we can do this. We can use the Ionic framework, which is a truly hybrid approach making cross-platform apps that uses the web browser within a native app container, or we can use NativeScript, which is a truly native application with native UI achieving that 60 frames per second. These are the two main differences between Ionic and NativeScript, and there's definitely pros and cons to both approaches. Because this is an introductory video, we'll again save that for a later lesson. One of the main differences between Angular and React is that Angular is indeed a full-fledged toolkit to create your applications. Out of the box, Angular has solutions for routing, accessing data services, templating, and more. I think the biggest advantage with Angular is that everything is right there for you to use. And this is going to provide a lot of consistency across your other Angular applications, including how you should even structure your project. Now, one of the biggest cons developers probably don't like about Angular is that it is indeed a box you are operating within. Including new libraries takes some setup to play nice with TypeScript and usually needs to be wrapped in some kind of Angular service to work with other Angular components. There's definitely an Angular way to do some things. Now, can you use Angular without TypeScript? Sure, you can, but it's really probably not used widely. And so if you really don't like TypeScript, you might be best just choosing a different framework, maybe something like React. And the question that all of our managers and CTOs out there wanna know, who's using Angular today? Well, the NBA, Sears, the NFL, and uh, Grubhub are just a few. And for a more list of companies using Angular 1 and 2, you can go to madewithangular.com and see a full listing of more showcases. React, on the other hand, takes a different approach to all this because React is just a piece of the puzzle. React's big selling point is its use of a virtual DOM and the emphasis on application state. And so now you're probably asking yourself, well, what's a virtual DOM? And to understand that, we gotta talk about the regular DOM for a second. The document object model or DOM is the view representation of all your code. It takes our HTML and JavaScript to create what we see on the actual page. For a more in-depth explanation on the DOM and what it really is, visit the links below in the video. The thing about the DOM is that it was never really built for the dynamic web apps of today. Early websites were static content and plain text living on a page. These days we are really pushing the DOM in ways it was not designed to do. So React went about solving this performance problem by abstracting itself away from the environment. 
With React, you actually work with an object representation of the DOM. React maintains two snapshots, one original and one of your updated changes. It then compares the two to find the difference, updating only that small piece of code that actually needs to be changed, rather than rewriting the entire HTML document. What ends up happening is a huge performance boost, as we're not really forcing the whole browser to repaint itself every time there's a change. Again, there's a lot more that goes into this process, so if you're curious and you want to read more, we'll definitely leave a link in the description below. One of my favorite things about React is the focus it has on application state. It's an object that determines how the code or component renders and behaves. You can think of state as a single source of truth for all the React components. Rather than keeping values and variables that are littered throughout the component or application, they're maintained in a single object that can only be updated through a special method of set state. It's similar to a private class with properties that get updated with a public method. Now you still use variables in React, but state is an object used for anything that's dynamic, like our data that might change, or maybe Boolean values to, like, to show or hide a loading spinner. This makes it really easy to debug a React application, and you can always find a specific state to try to reproduce some bug or some feature. Now because React focuses on these two features of the virtual DOM and state alone, we need to fill in those missing pieces like routing and templating. Luckily, there are tons of React libraries out there to support this, like the React Router and JSX. JSX is not technically templating, but it serves and resembles similar properties and functionality. Tools like the Create React app make this really easy to create a React app that already has all these pieces assembled for you. In React, we don't really get a lot of that boxed-in feeling we might feel with Angular, because it only governs the view layer with the state object. It doesn't really care if you want to include another library. You can easily snag a package off of NPM, import it into your application, and off you go. The downside with that is that a lot of React apps can vary in their composition. With so many tools to accomplish similar tasks, you might find two React applications that looked very different from one another. So if you're gonna use React, it's gonna be really important you and your team get together and agree upon certain tools and style opinions within your organization. And just as a reminder, we can achieve a lot of the things that we get in Angular with type checking and so forth, but there's so many different React packages out there that again, it's really important to agree upon what we're gonna use and be on the same page within our organization. And in React, we can also make mobile apps just like Angular. So if we wanted to make mobile apps with React, we would use React Native. We could technically use NativeScript, but React Native is really leading the charge in making native UIs for mobile devices. React Native comes from the same people at Facebook that give us React and has a great ecosystem of third-party components. If we wanted to take a more hybrid approach with web views inside a native container, we could just use PhoneGap from Apache. In fact, this is what Ionic builds off of. And as far as who's using React, there's actually quite a few companies you might recognize, such as Twitter, Airbnb, or Uber, or Pinterest. They're all using React somewhere in their product. Airbnb is probably one of the biggest React companies I've seen, including React Native. Now, if you're using Angular or you're planning to use Angular, don't let this discourage you because a trendy name is not on your list. Because remember, Angular completely rewrote itself from version 1 to version 2 to be a large, scalable framework. It wasn't really intended to do that with Angular 1, but they pushed it as far as they could take it and then they went back to the drawing board on Angular 2, whereas React has had much more of a steady evolution because it's only really focusing on the view layer in the state object. Some of these other companies started off with PHP or Ruby on Rails, and they've been sprinkling React into their applications here and there. So that might be a reason why a lot of them chose React over Angular, because they weren't rebuilding it from the start and needing a whole framework like that. I think one of the worst things you could probably do is to pick one of these frameworks because company A or B is using it. Again, look at these frameworks, evaluate it for your own self, and then make the decision going forward. Well, that's going to do it for our introductory video on Angular vs. React. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more tutorials like this in the future.